For radiology, the practical implications of 3D printing technology is that we can make models that we hold in our hand. And I have some of them here. This is a patient's aortic valve that we're able to print. And not only can you see the entire structure of the valve, you can actually look inside, see the calcification in a way that you couldn't do with standard three-dimensional visualization that we do now on a 2D screen. Um, other examples that we have here are things that you can actually, a knee that's going to go for a knee replacement, and things that you can actually look and hold and hand to referring physicians and surgeons so that they can actually plan procedures. Cost is still a major barrier because 3D printing as it stands now is not reimbursed. People do need 3D printing and they use it, for example, in a child with a congenital cardiac anomaly, 3D printing is standardly used even though it's not reimbursed. However, we do need to gather data and accumulate evidence and then ultimately make guidelines and get 3D printing reimbursed and that's one of the major goals that we have here at RSNA. There are training requirements needed for 3D printing just like there was when any new modality was introduced in radiology. For example, when MRI was introduced, people needed to learn the physics of MRI. They needed to learn what TE and TR is, what the different types of pulse sequences that had to be used. That same, that same phenomenon is going to happen in 3D printing. That is, people are going to have to learn the nomenclature and the language of the types of 3D printers there are, how STL files or standard tessellation language files are made from DICOM images, and go through that process so that we can actually take our DICOM images that we have now and make models like we have here. This is a brain model and not only can you see the uh, cortex, but you can actually see some of the, neuron, uh, the uh, neurons that are um, incorporated into the model. <laughs> 3D printing is already changing radiology practice, but it's going to change practice a lot. That is that as our referring physicians and especially our surgeons become more familiar with models, they're going to ask for them more and more. And it'll be up to us to provide that service. The DICOM images are made by radiology equipment. We read the DICOM images for interpretation. And so we're going to have to take, to take it to the next step and actually produce the models. And so it will change our practice. The 3D lab that used to exist in many institutions, which was a structured place where there was computers to actually put a 3D visualization on a 2D screen is now in the next several years going to become a 3D printing lab where there's a 3D printer. Those DICOM images are brought there, converted to STL files, and then 3D printed.